Have you ever wondered how exactly React hooks work under the hood and why they have the rules that they have? Well, in this video, we're gonna answer those questions by building our own use state hook completely from scratch. And just before we get started, if you do find this video helpful, please do hit that like button. It really does help me as a creator who's just starting out on YouTube. So without further ado, let's dive in. So to get started, clone the repo in the link down below if you wanna follow along and let's get going. So what we have on the page are these two counts over here, count A and count B. And when I click on add or subtract underneath count A, it should change this number over here. And with count B over here, same thing with these buttons. So let's start by creating our use state function. So we're gonna say const use state is equal to this function. And our use state takes in an initial value, right? So let's take in initial value as an argument. So what are we gonna return from our use state? Well, we're gonna return a value. And for now, let's just return initial value. And then we're also gonna return a set function. So that'll be set value. And we're gonna create that set value function here. So let's say set value. There we go. And in here, let's just console log and then bring in new value as an argument. So let's just log that out. And now we can use our use state. So let's say const and then it'll be count a and set count a and that'll equal to our use state call and then we're just going to pass in the initial value and the initial value for count a is going to be one right so now in theory just because we're returning initial value count a should be equal to one right so let's actually bring it in over here this value so let's say count a and save it and let's refresh and you can see that count a is indeed one but what we actually want to do is we want it to have some sort of persistence, right? So when we call it multiple times throughout multiple renders, we always want it to return the same state value. So what we're going to do is create a new variable outside of our use state function. Let's call it state value. And we're just going to set it to be undefined for now. And what we're going to do in our use state hook, firstly, is we're going to say if our state value is undefined, then we're going to set our state value to our initial value, right? And then instead of returning our initial value down here, we're gonna return the state value. And this state value is now going to store the actual state for our use state. So if I save that and refresh, you can see everything still works as normal, which is to be expected. So now let's actually hook up our set count A. So we're gonna add an on click to our subtract button over here, and we're gonna set count A to count a minus one. And then I'm just gonna copy that and add it to the add button. And this is gonna be exactly the same, but just plus one, right? So if we save this and refresh and I click add, you'll see that our set value over here is called with new value and the new value is gonna be two because we're adding. And then if I refresh again and I subtract, the new value is gonna be zero because we're going from one minus one to zero, perfect. So now what we actually wanna do when we call set value is we wanna change this value of state value. So pretty simple, we just go state value is gonna be equal to our new value, right? So now in theory, we're calling set value and let's say we're setting this from one to zero, then we should be returning zero over here instead of our initial state, which was one, right? Let's try it out. So I click subtract, which should set it to zero, but nothing happens here. And that's because we need to tell React to actually re-render our app component. So how we're gonna do this is simply just call this react dom.render function again. So right now we call this once when the script is first evaluated, but I'm actually gonna turn this into a function. So I'm gonna create a function, I'm gonna call it render app. And gonna call it once initially when we first evaluate the script. And if we refresh, everything should still work as normal. But what we're gonna do now is when we call set value over here, I'm actually gonna take render app and call it after we've set state value to our new value. Let's refresh and see if that works. There we go. We've just implemented a very, very simple use state from scratch. So let's just quickly run through how this works again. So we have our use state, which gets called as a function inside of our component and it gets and we get our state value back which is count a and we pass that into our different 
elements and functions down here. And then we have our set function as well, which is set value up here. And when our count value is say one over here and we click subtract, then we're just calling set count a one minus one, which evaluates to zero. That gets passed up to our set value over here. So zero comes in here and then we set state value to zero. And then we re-render the app so that our app component over here gets called again. And when it gets called again, our new state gets called again, which returns our new state value, right? So how do we do this for count B as well? Well, normally with a React use state, we would bring in count B, set count B, and have a separate use state call over here. And we're gonna set this initial state to minus one. So let's hook that up. So we're gonna say count B over here. So let's pull that in. And then for add and subtract, I'm just gonna copy the add and subtract from count A, paste it in and then just gonna say count B for these two, and then again, count B. So it's the same thing, but just a second time over, right? So now if I refresh, you can see something unexpected, or I guess expected happens. Both count A and B have the same value. And if I add and subtract, no matter which one I click, they both change. And that's because we're only storing the state value once, right? So only the value for this use state over here is actually being stored. So how do we store multiple state values for multiple hooks? So the way that we're gonna do it, and this is the way React does it as well, is we're gonna change state value over here to an array. So we're gonna change it to const because we're never gonna reassign it. So we're gonna say state values instead of state value. And that's just gonna be an empty array, right? And what we wanna do here is we want to store the state for count A at index zero of the array. And for count B, we wanna store its state at index one like this. But you might ask, how do we know when we call this use state, which one we're actually calling? Well, one thing that we could do is, I guess we could pass in an index over here or some sort of label, right? Imagine we passed in a label like this saying, this is count A state and this is count B state. And we then actually stored it as an object over here. So A would be one, for example, and B would be minus one. And we would change it like that. So we would instead of saying state value over here, we'd say state values, and then we would pass in our ID that we passed in. But that's not how React to use state works. We don't have to assign any labels at all to our hooks. Rather, React relies on the order that the hooks are called in to actually figure out which state belongs to which hook. So let's actually look at how we're gonna implement that. So I'm gonna remove our values over here. It's just that it's an empty array. And I'm gonna create a new variable here called call index. And this is the value that's gonna track which hook is actually being called. So what we're gonna do is when use state is called, we're gonna increment call index by one. So let's just do that. And then what we're gonna do is instead of setting state value over here, we're gonna change all three of these instances to state values and then pass in that call index. So when use state over here is called the first time in a render, call index over here is gonna be zero. But then when the second use state is called right after that, call index is gonna be one because it gets called again. And then just one thing we need to do is create a new variable called current call index. And that's gonna take in call index and we're gonna pass it to number. And we're gonna use current call index instead of call index here. And I'll explain why exactly that is in a bit. But let's save this for now and refresh the app and see what happens. Ah, now you can see that count A's value is one and count B's value is minus one, that's awesome. Now in theory, everything should work just fine. So if I click add on count A, oh wait, it that actually doesn't work. So what's actually happening here is when we set the value of count A, we're calling re-render app. But what happens when we call re-render app is call index by this point has already been incremented twice. So what we actually need to do is we need to take call index and we need to reset it whenever we re-render. So we're gonna set call index back to minus one whenever we re-render the app. So let's save that and refresh and see what happens. And as you can see, everything works beautifully. Now we can have multiple hooks inside of the component and all of their states are stored here according to their call index or their call order. And this basically gives you the same functionality and API as a React use state. 
Now, just one thing is why we have this current call index. So the reason we need to do this is we actually need to kind of freeze our call index for use in this function. Because what would happen if we have these two hooks is this first use state gets called, right? And then call index gets set to zero, right? And then we have our set value over here and that would use call index, which at that point would be equal to zero. But then we call our second hook over here during render and then call index is gonna be one. But what actually happens there is because we're referencing call index directly, when we call set value on our first hook over here, call index at that point, because both of them have been called, will be one. So in order to kind of freeze our call index within this particular use state and make sure that, for example, for this first call, it's always gonna be zero, we create a separate variable that's frozen and we pass call index into number and the reason we wrap it in number is to make sure that we don't get a pointer to call index over here, to make sure that it's a whole new number. I haven't seen this happen in Brave browser, but I remember seeing this when I ran this in a code sandbox ages ago. So I just added this back to be safe. So obviously this is a super simple implementation of use state. And the way that React does it is obviously way more complex. And this one, for example, wouldn't be reliable to use it within multiple components. It actually just works when you use it in one component. But it does highlight a few things about hooks. Number one, just the way it works, right? The, how you can have a function that somehow magically contains some state. But, you know, when you actually look at it, it's not that magical because we're just storing uh, a value in an array, right? And secondly, it highlights why those rules of hooks exist. So if we go to uh, rules of hooks, if we just Google that and head to the React documentation, you'll see that we have two rules of hooks. The one is only call hooks at the top level. So don't call them inside loops, conditions, or nested functions. And the second one is only call them from React functions. So let's look at the first rule. Don't call them inside loops, conditions, or nested functions. Well, if we call them inside of these, then we aren't guaranteeing the exact same call order each time. Because let's say we had it in a loop, and that loop iterated over an array that had some sort of length that changed between renders then that hook might have a different call order the next render around. And that would mess up our whole storing by call order over here. And then secondly, only calling React hooks from React functions. And that's basically because when you call a hook, this hook state actually gets attached to the component itself. I mean, in our example, we're just saving it in the top level of the file because we just wanted a simple implementation, but it actually gets stored on that instance of the component within the React virtual DOM and calling it from a JavaScript function just won't work. So I hope this has helped you better understand how React hooks work. And if you're interested in learning more about the internals of React, I suggest Sean Wang's excellent lesson on rebuilding React from scratch. It taught me so much about how React really works and especially when it comes to concurrent mode and suspense. And finally, please smash that like button if you found this helpful. And if you have any questions, comment down below and I'll do my best to get back to you. Finally, if you want to know as soon as I release more tutorials like this, click the link down below to sign up for my newsletter. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.